So hello everyone and welcome to the uh, Jaeger project. I'm excited to be here and continue talking about Jaeger after the KubeCon in Amsterdam and share you, you know, the project updates. Uh, my name is Pavel, I am a software engineer at Red Hat. I am a Jaeger maintainer as well, maintainer of OpenTelemetry operator and Grafana Tempo operator. Uh, when I'm not contributing, uh, I like to spend my time in the mountains doing some free ride skiing and uh, mountain biking. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can do that on the CNCF Slack or on Twitter, and we can talk about observability or you know, one of these fun sports as well. So today I will um, start with introduction to distributed tracing. We'll talk about why we should use tracing in the first place. Then we will do a live Jaeger demo with microservice-based application where you will see you know, how Jaeger works and what kind of data you can see in the console. Uh, we'll focus as well on the service performance monitoring tab that we have in Jaeger. I will explain how it works. Um, and then we have a bunch of topics related to open telemetry. Uh, we'll talk about how you can use open telemetry collector with the performance monitoring tab, but as well how you can you know, mix open telemetry collector with Jaeger collector, uh, and ultimately talk about Jaeger V2. Uh, it's a new project that we have in Jaeger. We want to rebase a Jaeger components on top of open telemetry collector. Um, and then towards the end, I will briefly talk about the open telemetry auto instrumentation and how you can use it with Jaeger. And last but not least, uh, we'll talk about new features and roadmap for 2024. So why distributed tracing? And TLDR is because uh, we write complicated code and we use complicated architectures, right? And we as industry spend a lot of time thinking about how we can you know, decouple our applications, how we can split them into separate pieces that can be you know, created separately, compiled, and deployed and shipped, which is great. It enables us to innovate uh, independently. However, when things go slow or break, uh, we should have a proper tool to identify, you know, what is causing the issue. And the issue as well is that these separate components or services or even third-party APIs are, um, managed and operated by different teams, right? And if we don't have a tool that can pinpoint the issue, uh, then we don't know even who to contact, right, if something goes wrong. So tracing besides the root cause analysis can help us to understand relationships and dependencies that we have in our system, uh, and as well define very effective SLAs and SLOs. Uh, before we jump into demo, I would like to talk about like, conceptually how we can split the distributed tracing deployment in our environment. Uh, and there is three components usually. Uh, there is the instrumentation, which is all about how we capture data from our applications. Um, and it's very important to keep instrumentation separate from the data collection and the backend because usually it requires code changes, right? And if code changes are required, then we need to uh, you know, recompile and redeploy, which can be very uh, time consuming if we have you know, maybe dozens of hundreds of services. Uh, for instrumentation, we recommend users to use the OpenTelemetry project, uh, which you know, should give us stable APIs uh, that allows us to use any vendor of our choice, right? Don't, don't lock us into specific uh, backend, which is very important. Then there is data collection, and data collection is about how we gather this data from the instrumentation into a collector. We process it, uh, and by processing I mean we, for instance, might remove some sensitive data, or we might do additional data capture. For instance, we might be a, able to collect Kubernetes resource attributes, or we can even you know, extract new telemetry data from the data that has been collected, as we will see uh, in the demo. Uh, and then finally, there is the storage with analytics functionality and visualization. So Jaeger falls into the data collection and storage with visualization, 
and open telemetry into instrumentation and data collection as well. So we see there is an overlap and we'll talk about you know, how we can uh, use both projects simultaneously. Before I jump into the, the demo, let's first unpack these two concepts that we use in tracing. And first one is trace. And trace essentially um, means end-to-end -end execution in our system, right? It, it models how a request went through all the services. Uh, and then there is a span which models or which, which means like single unit of work essentially. Um, you can think about it as a method invocation or HTTP call or database call. Uh, and span usually has start and end, which implies duration, and it contains contextual information that we call tags or attributes, right? So these describe what the operation was actually doing. So when we put multiple spans together, we get a trace, which is like a tree-like structure that you can see on the left or you can visualize it as uh, a timeline view that you see on the right. Um, we call it as well a Gantt chart. Uh, this is the visualization that most tracing tools use. So with that, I will jump into the Jaeger console. And what I have here is the Hodder application that comes from the Jaeger upstream. You can run it as well. And it's very simple. You can click on one of these buttons. When you do that, you essentially order a car ride, like a, you know Uber or taxi. And so let's try. Let's do that, and we will get a response from the back end saying a driver with this license plate will arrive in two minutes, and then we get the latency measured from the browser. So how do we, you know? How can we use tracing tool to you know, understand this application? Uh, in Jaeger console, the first thing what we can do is to show the, uh, the system architecture diagram. It shows us the, you know, the, the relationships and dependencies between services. So in this case, there is front end, um, there is calling customer, then driver and root, and then there is a bunch of databases. Uh, we see as well there is some sort of test executor service that is calling the UI and then the front end. Some behind the scenes and as well running, you know, some script that is uh, calling uh, the service. So this is great for the relationships, but I don't understand, like, on this screen I cannot perform the root cause analysis, right? I don't know what uh, is the end-to-end -end execution, if the front end is calling customer first or driver or the root. If I need to do root cause analysis, I need to go to search and search for traces. So what I get here as a search result are all the kind of user actions or transactions, right? Um, I, I, I can see which one is the slowest one, which one is the fastest one, what is the over latency of the request, and <coughs> you know, how many operations are there and what services were executed in this transaction. When I compare this latency here that we see, it will differ from what we see in the hot rod, right? Because this one is, is measured from the browser and these, are, these ones are measured from the, uh, from the services, right? From the first service in my, in my environment, which will be obviously less than what is in the browser. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to choose the slowest service or the slowest transaction, right? And I get the timeline view. Uh, there is a lot of information here, uh, but it's very simple to, to understand it. Um, on the left, I see the service name and the operation name. And on the right, I see the line that denotes the duration of the operation. So for instance, I see the MySQL took maybe two 357 milliseconds, which is roughly half of the overall latency. So by looking at this, I understand, you know, how long each operation takes, uh, but as well, I see the structure, right? And I see the driver is calling Redis, uh, probably to get some data, and I see that it's calling Redis in, uh, in a sequence, right? So maybe there is a for loop, 
that is executed against Redis API, which might be by design, which is okay, but maybe it's a mistake and it's something I could optimize in my code. I could use maybe batch API or you know do um, like execute all these requests in parallel. Uh, what I see as well is this exclamation mark, which denotes there is some sort of issue. When I click on it, uh, I see that this operation failed because it's marked with error. And I even see the exception message, which is Redis timeout. So usually in the tracing system, if there is exception, it's gonna be captured in the, in the spans. Now, when I click on the first one, which is the span from the dispatch API, I see the, the text that will show me that this is HTTP operation. I see the endpoint, the HTTP method, version, status code, all the inform important information to understand the HTTP call. When I click on the similar HTTP code from the road service, I again see the same data. And this is very important because I get the consistent set of uh, of information uh, for the same event in different languages and frameworks. For, so when I compare this to logging, uh, in logging we have no standardization, right? So different frameworks and different developers and different languages have different conventions in logging, which is not great in distributed systems that are you know, usually polyglot and use different technologies. Um, so with distributed tracing, you get you know, this nice standardization that you always get the same data uh, across your environment. What I see here as well is the process, which you know, shows me from where the data was exported. In this case, it's kind of boring, it's just a Fedora Linux machine, but if this was running on Kubernetes, I could as well see you know, what is the pod name, what is the deployment name, and all important information to find out uh, you know, the, the source of data. And then I see logs, uh, and this is actually logs from the standard output. Um, so you can configure the instrumentation that runs in your process to send the log messages to a current span, which is super cool, right? Because then the logs are not mixed uh, between you know, multiple concurrent requests that your process is handling. So as I switch to the logs, but this is not, yeah, it's here actually, it's a different. These logs are mixed together, right? It's hard to understand them, what, but in a tracing system, I get them nicely attached to the, to the span um, and nicely parsed with you know, what was the time and what was the message. So one of the new features that we have in Jaeger is this um, black solid line, which shows the, um, the critical path, right? And critical path shows us the operations that are kind of the most important, right? That contribute to the over latency of this transaction. So if I need to optimize latency in this user action, I, I should optimize only operations that are on the critical path because if I optimize something else, it will not roll out into the latency improvement. I can as well you know, collapse the operations and it's gonna be uh, properly uh, reflected in a, in a timeline view. And maybe last one thing, so for instance, for the database call, we are able to see you know, the, the query uh, statement So the timeline view is, uh, to summarize, is great to, to perform root cause analysis and understand you know, what the system is actually doing. Uh, now, I will switch to the monitor tab. And in the monitor tab, we see metrics. And uh, we see the latency, uh, error rate, and request rate. And what is cool, we see the same set of metrics across all services that export trace data. Uh, and on top of that, 
these metrics are as well split by the operation name, right? So the operation name is usually the URL pattern for HTTP request. So if I, if I have, I don't know, five uh, REST APIs, I will see the same set of metrics for, the, uh, for my REST APIs uh, that I have in my process. So the way this works is, is with the open telemetry collector. Um, and it kind of brings Jaeger project towards more kind of traditional APM solution. And it gives us, you know, the monitoring and additional alerting capabilities. Alerting is not part of the Jaeger, but you can use Prometheus or other alerting system to, to alert on those metrics. Uh, so what do you need, how it works? Um, the trace data are exported from you know, the instrumentation to the open telemetry collector. Uh, open telemetry collector then is looking at this trace data and is aggregating metrics and reporting those metrics into the exporter um, into Prometheus, and then the Jaeger UI just queries the Prometheus. You can as well set up the open telemetry collector to export those metrics to different metric system, but only Prometheus is supported by the Jaeger UI. Uh, in, the, in the collector, you need to enable the span metrics connector, uh, and it's very simple. Uh, you just need to put it in the connectors, and then in the pipeline, a connector needs to be put as uh, exporter for traces in this case and as a receiver for metrics because it's kind of looking at the metrics and it's exporting, it's looking at the traces and it's exporting metrics. Um, you can as well visualize those metrics in different tools, uh, for instance, like Grafana. And as well, you can send them to, uh, to any metric system supported by the open telemetry collector. Okay, we saw this, and then brings us to the, like how can we use open telemetry collector with Jaeger? So the collector integrates with Jaeger in different aspects. Uh, so for instance, it can receive Jaeger data in you know, the agent protocols and as well the, the, the collector. It has as well the Jaeger the remote sampling extension and it can send and receive Kafka messages in Jaeger format. So why would you use the open telemetry collector with Jaeger? So you know, the monitor tab might be one use case. And in addition to that, the collector has a great ecosystem of additional capability that is not in Jaeger. So for instance, it allows you to filter data, you know, do PII. It allows you to drop data that you don't need. Um, you can as well do tail-based sampling um, or even smart routing. So for instance, um, you can keep majority of traces in your local cluster and send just a subset to your more expensive third-party tracing system. Or it has very popular Kubernetes attribute processor that can uh, kind of automatically attach the Kubernetes metadata to your uh, telemetry data, right? So all the pod names, pod UIDs, what is the node name and things like that. So how do you combine these two? Uh, simply, you can put the OTL collector in front of Jaeger collector uh, and use the OTLP to send data to Jaeger collector. If you're using Kafka, uh, the OTL collector has the Kafka exporter. Uh, you can configure it to use the Jaeger type. Uh, you know, you put, that will put the uh, spans in a Jaeger format to Kafka which can be read by the uh, Jaeger ingester and then the ingester will store them to, to database. Okay, that brings us to Jaeger V2, uh, which is a project that we started a long time ago, then it was kind of removed from the project uh, and now it's there again. Uh, so what we want to do essentially is to rebase all Jaeger components on top of OpenTelemetry Collector 
uh, and essentially provides kind of opinionated build of the open telemetry collector. Uh, what we want to do is to expose the UI and query as an extension and storage layer implement as exporters, right? So there will be Elasticsearch exporter, Cassandra exporter, and uh, in-memory exporter. The code is already in place in the main repository. Uh, we haven't released it yet, uh, but it's there. You can, you can run it, and this is the sample configuration. And the interesting bit here is the extensions, uh, and there is the Jaeger storage extensions, with, which will en encapsulate all the storage um, backends that we have. So in this case, there is only in-memory, but there can be as well you know, Elasticsearch Cassandra. You will configure the storage in the extension and then reference it in the uh, Jaeger query extension and in, this, in the exporter. So this way, your storage configuration will be in a single place and those two components will just reference it. Uh, at the moment, only the in-memory supports it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are looking for, for contributions. And in the main repository, uh, you can find issues labeled V2. So we would like to you know, help us to build it. Uh, we are happy to, to accept any contributions. And um, so this will be the future of Jaeger going forward. Uh, at some point, we will deprecate uh, and remove the uh, kind of the existing uh, Jaeger collector, Jaeger query, and all in one. There will be just this single build uh, based on the open telemetry collector. So before we draw roadmap, uh, I want to talk about the instrumentation. And as you know, the Jaeger clients uh, have been deprecated for a long time. We as well deprecated Jaeger agent uh, this October. Uh, and we recommend you to migrate to OpenTelemetry collector, uh, which has the, you know, the Jaeger receiver, which uh, opens the same port so that there is you know, clear migration path. If you're using Jaeger SDKs uh, with open tracing, uh, you can use the open telemetry, open tracing shim and uh, keep using you know, the, your instrumented services with open tracing API. Uh, it has great uh, support for languages, even more that we supported in Jaeger. Uh, on the configuration side, the migration is as well you know, very simple, straightforward, because the open tracing and open telemetry use the same concepts. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the trace propagation. Uh, Jaeger uses uh, Jaeger protocol or Jaeger format, which is supported by all open telemetry SDKs, but it's something you need to enable explicitly. Uh, and open telemetry goes beyond just the API and SDK, right? It has as well the agents or auto instrumentation libraries, which you can which are software packages that you can just download and put into your hosts or Docker containers, and they will automatically instrument your applications without you doing any code changes. Right? It's a very powerful and very simple way how to get telemetry data. Uh, the languages the, or the agents are available for some languages and not for others. However, the community is still kind of evolving. And for instance, in Go, there is uh, already eBPF-based auto-instrumentation. So I guess over time, more and more languages will have some automatic instrumentation in the open telemetry ecosystem. So what are the, the new features that we have? Um, we enabled by default the OTLP ingestion on the, op on the Jaeger collector. Uh, and as well, keep in mind that the open telemetry collector removed support for uh, Jaeger exporter. Um, so the way how you get data from OTL collector to Jaeger is just the OTLP. We as well kind of improve the support for the span metrics connector that I showed you before. Um, actually, the span metrics connector used to be span metrics processor, and there were some breaking changes that we needed to, to resolve. Then we have the Jaeger V2, uh, which is, I think, exciting project, uh, and it can really you know, bring some innovation into Jaeger. 
Then we did some improvements on the query. Um, so Jaeger query has um, multiple APIs. One of them is v3 that exposes uh, OTLP. We bumped it to, to OTLP v1. Uh, you can find the definitions in the Jaeger IDL repository, and uh, it exposes the gRPC and HTTP. And then on the UI side, we have the critical path uh, visualization, searching for um, tags when you have this, the, uh, the, the timeline view, and as well, batch download of traces. So for the V2, uh, it's something we want to really focus on uh, in the next year. Uh, we will you know, add support for the missing storage uh, layers that we have, and as well for Kafka. We want to as well reuse as much as possible from the open telemetry collector. So for instance, the Kafka exporter uh, receiver will just import it from the open telemetry collector contrib. Uh, at the moment, our build doesn't support the collector builder, uh, which is something we want to support. We want to let users build their own distribution of collector as well with just you know, specific storage backend they want to use. Um, there is as well somebody working on the native ClickHouse storage uh, exporter that will be only in the V2 and we want to officially as well support Elasticsearch 8. And you know, once we have more capabilities in the V2, once we have you know, the feature parity, we will you know, of do officially release and deprecate the, the existing components. Okay, this is everything what I have prepared for today. Do you have any questions? Are y'all going to keep support for open search too, in for in V two? Uh, so, what is the support for open search? Yeah, um, I think I was talking to Yuri, the main maintainer. I think it should be well supported. I'm not sure what's your experience. I just want to make sure. Yeah, it, it seems like it would be well supported, but there's going to be some feature deviation, from what I understand, from Elasticsearch and Open Search. Yeah, uh, so th V2. those are two different. We want to treat them differently. So even, even right now, when you run Elast OpenSearch, uh, it's, you need to enable it differently than the Elasticsearch. Yeah. OK, so it's still in good state. Yeah. Hi. Uh, great stuff. Thanks very much. Uh, I love the way you, you're using the open telemetry component architecture to provide the, like, the transient storage and then separately the queries. Uh, uh, I wonder if, uh, so you have currently defined like a Jaeger storage extension. It seems like it could be maybe generalized into general telemetry storage, yeah, this one, to store uh, also logs and metrics and then people could build queries for those and UIs? Possibly, yes, <laughs> but it's something that we don't do in Jaeger. But. Would it be easy to to maybe just rename the Jaeger storage into telemetry storage and allow storing that. It's, it's all OTLP, right? So. Yeah, so at the moment, uh, this extension is using the storage layer from existing Jaeger, uh -huh. which okay. has its own format for every single okay. exporter, right? So Elasticsearch has a different model than Cassandra and, and so on. I see, okay, so yeah. thanks. Yeah, that's great, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have a quick question. That um, uh, We have a bunch of uh, legacy applications that um, run a really old version of Java, like Java 6 or Java 7. And uh, uh, the, these applications that we uh, give, give it a really hard time when something breaks. And uh, is there any way that uh, we can use uh, Java auto implementation to uh, install the agent for the service? Yes, so it depends if such old Java version is supported by the Java agent. I'm not sure if it is. I think the lowest version is Java 8. Eight yes. Is there any way or is there uh, another uh, alternative ways to imp implement tracing for the system? 
Yes. So you could you could um, implement it yourself by reusing parts of the Java agent. So the, in the Java agent repository, there are instrumentations which are packaged as separate Maven modules that you could include to your application, initialize, and get the tracing that way. So, so, so let's say there is instrumentation for servlet, right? So you could just pull it in as, as a Maven dependency, initialize it in your code, um, and, and have tracing. Oh, so uh, I have to modify the uh, You will have to modify Java your, agent? yes. Java agent? You will have, no, you will have to modify your application. Oh, but uh, yeah. that's not, <laughs> you, you, you not could, really an option. You could maybe build your own agent distribution with okay. a subset of instrumentations that are only for that specific Java version. Okay. But yeah. it, it's like, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work probably. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, another question. Uh, uh, so, in uh, when the the agent, uh, when the tracing, uh, when I implement the tracing, that some of the traffic that is TCP based, then the when I show it on the service map, uh, it does not uh, it does not show on the service service map. So, is there okay. just uh, what what kind of traffic that will show up on the service map? Yeah, that's a great question. So this um, diagram shows you um, connection. I, I know HTTP is the yes. So it, it the, the implementation, but uh, like TCP based protocol is. The TCP maybe, but the spend data they need to contain the servers, the server and client attributes or spend kinds mm -hmm. to make the correct connection that this is a server and this is a client, right? To to kind of figure out what is the direction of this uh, uh, of this arrow, uh, and then is as well looking at the you know HTTP attributes, but as well at the messaging attributes like you know the consumer and producer. So your TCP traffic will need to have some sort of metadata uh, in the spans for this diagram to work. So uh, if, the, if it does not show on the service, uh, service map, so you, what you, can I do to investigate? Yeah. Or you, you, the best way maybe is to open issue on the Jaeger with the trace sample. So you can maybe get the trace and just um, download it as a JSON and open issue that, hey, I have uh, this trace and it's not showing on the system architecture diagram. And we can take a look at the data and see um, what should be added. Okay. But you will, you will need to add that probably more attributes to your spans. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, can you uh, talk a little bit about uh, multi-tenancy support that you guys added? Okay, so the question is multi-tenancy support in Jaeger and it's a single tenant system. Okay. There, there is not much. I mean, for instance, if you're using Elasticsearch, you could um, define tenancy by using index prefixes for different um, tenants, but it's something you need to kind of set up and maintain. Okay, I thought there was an announcement that there was some updates or something around that. No. There were different atoms, but it's, yeah, it's not, well supported. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, on, I'm just wondering if there's any plans for supporting Loki on V2. Loki V2? Yeah, for, oh sorry, with version two of Jaeger, any support for, of all any planned support for using Loki for log storage? So Loki is log, log storage, right, from Grafana? Yeah. And um, it, it depends what you mean, right? <laughs> Do you mean like uh, how to correlate logs with traces or just store traces in the Loki system? So I'm already using Loki now. Mm -hmm. If I was to use what you've got up there, that means I'm gonna be storing the logs in two places. So can I consolidate down into one log storage just having logs in Loki only, but still experience the UI, how you've shown us? I, I don't think so, but Grafana has the Grafana Tempo project, yep. 
which um, has as well support for the Jaeger UI. So you could deploy Grafana Tempo, keep traces there, use the um, Jaeger UI with Tempo and use Loki for locks with, I guess, Grafana UI. Great, thank you. Right, any more questions? All right, thank you very much.